Another really important thing to understand when you're working in Excel is the concept of absolute versus relative referencing. So what exactly does that mean? Well, let's start out by talking about relative referencing. And we're going to start there because relative referencing is the default when you're working with Excel formulas. So if we take a look at this data set that we have in the worksheet, you can see that I have some order numbers, some customers, order date, the product that they've ordered. Then we have the quantity, so the number of items that they've ordered, and then the price. And we have two columns, columns H and I at the end here, which don't have anything in them. We need to complete those. So the first one that we need to complete is we need to work out or calculate what the total is going to be for each customer. So this is a reasonably straightforward calculation in Excel. We just want to multiply the quantity by the price to get the total. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can type in equals and then we can simply use the cell references. We don't actually have to type in sum in order to get this to work. And another thing to remember is that you don't necessarily have to use your mouse to click on these cells. We can use the arrow keys on our keyboard. So if I want to select the quantity cell, I can use the left arrow, press it twice to go to cell F5. I then want to multiply it, so we're going to put in an asterisk there, by cell G5. So again, if I press the left arrow on my keyboard, I can select cell G5. Now that's all we need to do. Hit enter and we get our answer. Incidentally, if you do use sum, it will still work. So if we type in equals sum, we can do exactly the same thing. We can select cell F5, multiply it by G5, close the bracket and hit enter and it's still going to work. So for very basic calculations where you're just multiplying or adding one number to another, you don't necessarily have to have sum at the start there. You can just use the cell references. Now, one of the cool things about formulas is that once you've typed the formula once into a cell, you don't then have to go to the cell underneath and type the same formula. You can simply copy this formula all the way down the column. And we do that by using the autofill handle. So if you take a look at this cell just here, notice the little green square in the bottom right hand corner. If we hover our mouse over it, we get that little small black cross. And we actually saw this in a previous lesson. Now what I can do is I can either click and drag the formula down, or alternatively I can simply double click and it's going to copy the formula down. So now you can see all of these calculations are correct. Now, the important thing to note here is that this is utilizing relative referencing. So what do we mean by that? Now, I've copied this formula down, which means that Excel has had to make an adjustment to the formula each time it moves down a row. For example, if we double click on this one just here and take a look at the formula, you can see that it's multiplying F12 by G12. And that is absolutely correct. You can see the cells there highlighted in blue and red. So every time we drag this formula down one, Excel modifies the cell reference and moves those down one as well. And that is what we call relative referencing. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. Now in a lot of situations, relative referencing is going to be what you need, but sometimes we don't want to use relative referencing. We need to use something called absolute referencing. And that is kind of the opposite. When we utilize absolute referencing, it means we're locking the formula to a specific cell. So when we copy down, it doesn't actually move down. So a scenario where we might have absolute referencing would be if we wanted to work out the sales tax for these totals. So let's say that we have our totals here in column H, but we want to work out what the total is going to be when we add on 20% sales tax. And we have the sales tax value in cell I1. So the formula to work this out would be equals, I am going to do a sum here, let's press the tab key, and we want to do the total multiplied 
by the sales tax. Now, if I was just to leave it at that and hit enter, it's going to give me the, the tax amount. But what I want is basically the total plus the tax. So if we double click to edit the formula, I need to add on to the end here plus the total again. So we're utilizing brackets based on the bod mass rule. I wanted to calculate H5 multiplied by I1, first of all, so it's going to work out the tax amount, and then I want to add it to the total. So when I hit enter, I get the correct result. Now, if I was just to drag this formula down in the same way, I'm going to double click, check out what happens. It all goes a little bit crazy and we've got lots of value errors in here and these formulas are just incorrect. And that is because if we choose one of these down here as an example, check out what's happening here. It's calculating cell H15, the total, which is correct. But when it comes to the sales tax, it's using I11. And that's because by default, we use relative referencing. And when we drag the formula down, it's going to move the cell references down. Now, in this instance, we always want this formula to refer to cell I1. And that is what we call absolute referencing. So let's do this again. I'm going to delete out everything. Let's do our formula one more time. I'm going to type in equals sum. We're going to do the total multiplied by the sales tax, but we need to lock this cell in place so it doesn't move when we copy the formula. Now, the way that we do that is to put a dollar symbol in front of the row and the column. Now, a quick way to add in dollar symbols is to simply press the F4 key on your keyboard. That basically says lock the column, lock the row. So now I can close the bracket. We can do plus the total. I'm going to do control enter to stay in the same cell. And this time when I copy the formula down, the formula is going to be correct. If we double click to take a look at one of these formulas a bit further down, you can see it's now referring to the correct cells. So H14, we haven't locked because we're fine for it to move those cell references down as we drag the formula down. It's only I1 that we need to lock in place. So that is the difference between relative and absolute cell referencing. There is also a third option, which is called mixed referencing, and that's where we either lock the row or the column. That's a little bit more advanced, so we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later on. But for now, this is one of the fundamental concepts in Excel that you need to be comfortable with, so it's definitely worth having a practice. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.